Nan Prasad, uh, my colleague here, uh, Girish, uh, we represent Akamai. Uh, most of you would have probably heard of Akamai. Uh, we are a technology enabler when it comes to you know, uh, getting the internet fast, getting uh, you know, how customers get their content to their customers fast. Uh, so we come here representing Akamai with respect to what it does for the analytics space. So the way the topic will be expected is, uh, you know, uh, as part of analytics, what we would like, first like to see is what analytics do we do? How is it going to help our customers? So first part of the presentation is going to be about the product. What does our analytics product offer? And you know, what are its capabilities and what not? Followed by, you know, we realize that there is a, a, a huge tech crowd here. So the second part of the presentation is going to be about the technology which serves our needs, our analytics needs. Okay. So I'm going to be talking on the product and uh, Girish is going to be talking on the technology side of things. So uh, if you have questions, please hold it until the end. Uh, uh, we most probably will keep a good amount of time for you and at the end. Okay? So uh, over, over the last uh, couple of years, one thing we have all you know, come to realize is the tremendous growth of the internet, right? Uh, you know, from our day days where it all used to be HTTP based to nowadays where everything is going to be Ajax based, there is, uh, the, you know, in terms of the number of uh, people using the internet as well as in terms of what they see on the net has seen tremendous growth. You know, the amount of content that flows through the net is so huge, uh, you know, we need technology to enable such a growth, such a tremendous growth. Right? So uh, as we and predict uh, from a study, by 2015, more than 60%, more than 62% of the traffic, of the online traffic is going to be on the video. We've already come to realize it, right? You know, uh, uh, I have started watching movies online I would uh, you know, never have dreamed that I would start watching movies so early you know, in India. Just like three, four years back, I know I, if, if I played just a YouTube video also, I could you know, keep rebuffing every once in a while. But now, I have, you know, the speeds, the bandwidths are so good that I can watch an online video in full. And even an SD one at uh, 2 MP speed. Right? So, such is the growth. And you know, looking at all such developments in the field, you know, media analysts predict that more than 62% of the traffic online is going to be video. So if, if such is going to be the case, we need tools which actually help us uh, monitor how is how are the streaming companies faring in terms of you know enabling such huge growth in the online video content. Right? So that is where media analytics comes into picture. So what we are going to go through is what media analytics is in general and what Akamai media analytics is in particular. Uh, uh, so why, why media analytics? Anybody wants to take a shot at that? I just gave you a, a hint. Right, that's one important uh, point. Anything else? Absolutely. So there are two sides to media, right? One is you are in the market because you want to make money at the end of the day. And then if you want to make money, you need to have all the required resources to help you Know, ensure that your customers are happy about what you are giving to them, right? Absolutely. So, 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 so with those two are the prime prime factors behind media analytics. So, visibility into the business aspect of it, as well as the quality aspect of it, is you know of real uh, critical importance. Uh, so, maximize you know, maximizing your monetization, like you said, uh, optimizing your product portfolios. So now, from a business angle, you want to ensure that the content you put online is what your customers want. You don't want to go up on perceptions, right? You know, you need to you need to have the have the good statistics behind which tell you this is what your customers want. So you are going to you know put a lot of your money in getting such content online, and a lot of your money in ensuring that that content reaches your customers well enough. Uh, then prioritizing marketing efforts and it goes like you said, incidental, uh, managing your distribution strategies and you know and looking as to how you are going to manage your costs overall. So again, uh, going further uh, deep onto why media analytics, you would like to know, you know, as someone who is into the online content business, you would like to know who is consuming your media, what is your user base, you know, where are they from, what are their you know, uh, media consumption uh, tendencies, the patterns. You now there are different aspects to how a user consumes media. There are demographic aspects like you know, we in India probably are more interested in politics than most you know, countries. So that there are such inferences to be driven out because that is what finally helps you, you know, decide what content you want to put on your front page on your website if you are a news channel for example. Uh, there are professional and social tendencies as well. Uh, you know, how are your users consuming your media? You know, 
like, like, we, like we already discussed, what do they watch? And once we know what do they watch, we also want to know how long do they watch it? Because user engagement is very important. Most of the online businesses are driven around ads. And you know, that is one reason why you would want to ensure that you engage your users for longer as you can. Because that is what is going to in turn drive your uh, you know, cost. Right? So, uh, and you know, to follow up on that, what is your user base? You know, once you know what is your user base, you also want to know is uh, whether your user base is constant. You know, do you have a loyal user base wherein you know, once I build up a certain you know, a group of users, they stick with me, they are my repeat customers, they come onto my website, you know, every uh, day, or is it that you know you, you have an audience which is more on a churning fashion where you know they come and go. You don't have a lot of repeat audience, but you have a lot of moving audience, right? Because that in turn helps you what content you want to put. And if you want to do some sort of a recommendation system, you know, like if you want to track me as to what I watch and recommend me similar videos in the future, you want to know whether I am a repeat customer or a new customer. Okay. And then once you have handled the business aspect of it, then it comes to the quality aspect. Now, what are the tipping points to consumption? You know, I know that I want to engage my audience well enough, but what is it that can add to the barrier to me engaging my audience well? So the quality aspects of the things, right? So uh, like I mentioned, you know, uh, it could be the playback quality, things like, you know, do, 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 do my users leave up for a lot? Does it take a lot of time for them to start a video you know, when I say I want to play a video? Uh, is it that, you know, their experience, what quality of the video are they experiencing? You know, the bit rate at which your video is being served. Because the quality of the screen also matters to me as a user. If it is good enough on screen, I would like to watch it. If it's jittery, I know I'm just going to go off the video. I'm going to abandon my video and move on to something else. So this is where uh, Akamai Media is comes in. Now, now that we have seen what are the you know, key driving factors, one is the audience engagement, then is the quality of streaming. So Akamai Media Analytics stresses you know, has models which exactly cater to the needs of analytics with respect to audience engagement and the quality uh, aspects. Okay. So uh, uh, media analytics is all about awareness. You want to know what is happening with your content, who is what, watching your content, blah, blah, blah. You also want once you have the metrics collected, once you have data as to what your user, users watch, what is the quality, you want to drive inferences out of it, right? Because the very meaning of having analytics is to decide what you want to do next. So just having a set of key metrics is not going to help as much as being able to infer things out of it. You know, if I, I have this data today, if I do a changes A, B, and C, I'm going to you know, drive so much more revenue tomorrow or increase my quality so much more tomorrow. You want such inferences to be drawn. That is where the solution helps. Then uh, Akamai Media Analytics stand, uh, stands independent, as in uh, you know Akamai is a major technology enabler for streaming as such. Uh, okay, but that is not to say that the analytics model is tied to the streaming network. Uh, our analytics model can work regardless of what a content provider's you know, uh, network is using for streaming. Uh, this is how uh, the media analytics solution in Akamai works. It is uh, client-side analytics, as in all the metrics that we collect, or the quality metrics, are from the end-user machines. So you know, whenever you play a certain video, there is a certain plugin component that we have which runs as part of the video, collects quality metrics and other related metrics as we see it on the end-user machine. Such data which is collected on the end-user machines is beaconed back to our cloud, the analytics cloud, where a lot of processing and aggregation happens and a lot of inferencing happens, which is what we collect and make available to our end users as part of the GUI application. So the first model that we have is the audience analytics. Uh, now whenever we talk of an analytics solution, we talk of reports, right? Like Gaurav, uh, if you actually uh, attended uh, Gaurav's talk, which visited this, he talked about you know, the reports are the must, uh, you know, the basic uh, needs of an analytics solution. There are different kinds of reports. You have canned reports where you know, as an analytics provider, you know what most of your users will need. So you build reports to meet those uh, uh, needs. And then you make way for new reports to be defined. So the customizing uh, the uh, analytics solution is very important part as well because you don't necessarily know what all your customer might need. All you have is a guess and probably some statistics prove one, you know, fact as to this is what they will definitely need. But what more, right? So uh, audience analytics is a set of reports, standard and custom. It ships with a set of you know, standard reports and then you can go and create your own reports based upon your needs. It's also a set of dashboards where multiple reports are put together for quick summary for the business executives on the media consumption side as well as on the quality side. 
Uh, as we go further into the slides, we'll see, you know, we'll take a few sample reports, a few sample dashboards, and see what kind of metrics do they you know, make our uh, The second uh, model that we have is the quality of service monitor. Uh, this is, like the name says, mostly to do with quality monitoring. And uh, it, it primarily tracks quality metrics, not engagement metrics, and I talk of quality, the, the jittery that, uh, that your end users are seeing, the rebuffering activities that they're seeing, or uh, you know, whether they are able to access your content without any you know, hiccup or not, such other metrics are collected on the quality side. But the key difference between these two modules is that the quality of, see, the quality monitoring that you want to do has to be as close to your content being vast as possible. That has to be in real time because if there is a quality issue, now there is no point analyzing that issue after a day because the user has come, he has seen, you know, experienced bad quality and he has dropped off. You have, lost, you have, you have actually lost an opportunity to engage the user, right? So you want to see your uh, quality performance as soon as uh, possible, close to real time. So that's where the differentiation is. Quality, the chaos monitor works in real time. The metrics are available to you within a minute of it happening. Uh, the audience analytics on the other side is more about historic, uh, you know, uh, reporting. As in, we collect a lot of metrics, make it available for the user to go and analyze. So again, like I said, we are uh, more closer to the end user. We are your distribution network independent. Uh, we are cross-platform as in, you know, like I said, uh, we have a plugin which beacons data to us. We have plugins across all the major platforms, you know, Flash-based players, Android, iPhone, HTML5, or so like. Uh, an example dashboard from audience analytics. This is the business summary dashboard. Uh, it actually summarizes a lot of business-oriented uh, metrics for you. Uh, like, you know, when I talk of business oriented metrics, for example, the viewer trend, you know, how many viewers you have, how many of them are unique, then the, the geography that your users are from, uh, you know, what are your prime profit drivers, what is the site from where, you know, which is driving users to you, you want to know all those things, or which is the content that's being played most, so you can actually, uh, you know, figure out the category of content you want to put on your website, because you want to drive more audience. Uh, the, the top part of the dashboard is the K, you know, the KPI part is the key performance indicator. You know, when you look at the business practice, business aspects, you want to know how am I growing my viewers on a day by day basis, right? How, uh, what is the average play duration per viewer? Uh, what is the play percentage? Probably you might have uh, thousands of videos on your site, but if most of you come play for a few seconds or a minute and go up, you want to know because you don't want to hold so much data with you if users are not watching it, right? So what is the play percentage? How much of your content are your users playing? So all such details are available for a bird's eye view on the dashboard. Uh, likewise, on the quality side, we have the quality summary dashboard where we talk about the KQIs, the key quality indicators, what, you know, on an average, how long do your uh, users be buffer, what is the degree they experience, uh, you know, what is the average start of time before your you know, content starts playing, uh, and then you know, various individual metric related uh, reports like startup time once, rebuffer once, okay. We'll see some of, we'll run through some of those reports just as a snapshot of what the product does. Like you see here, now we can, this is a viewer based report where I can track how many of my viewers are, you know, unique and how many of your viewers are repeat. Uh, again, this is a viewer trend on an hourly basis because there are times of the day when you get more users than otherwise. Uh, this is a report, for example, which gives you uh, the key traffic drivers to your site. Uh, the top titles, the top content uh, category that your users are watching. Ads about, you know, ad strategy plays a key role in how you, uh, you know, uh, place your content on the site. So you want to know by placing ads where, uh, you know, what are you going to lose or what are you going to gain? There are a lot of, you know, maybe there are people who, for example, who like watching ads of a certain category and certain category of ads don't really attract user attention, right? You don't want to put such ads because you're going to lose an engagement opportunity. So. Like you can see in this report, you know, pre-roll ads, you know, ads that come before your video starts playing are the most, uh, you know, problem cases for user abandonment. Then, uh, startup time, as you can see here, see there is user abandonment. As startup time increases, you know, as a, when I, the moment I hit play, for the video to start playing, if it takes longer, like in this case, if you see, if it grows beyond five seconds, user has abandoned and moved on to something else. So I have lost an engagement opportunity. Uh, in this case, the debuffer uh, metric, if you see, I'm a use, engaging my viewers well. If, see, this is actually a plotting play duration at the debuffer time per minute. 
if you see as the leap of a time per minute is high, when it goes beyond 5 seconds, uh, the play duration that you use this play or content for has dropped. Which means if your quality is low, if the buffering is high, your users abandon you and move on. So you need to do something about your quality. Uh, then we have the, the bitrate one C. This is important for packaging. If you see here, a 1500 kbps uh, you know, stream is what your users are mostly watching. So you don't necessarily want to spend on encoding your streams at different bit rates or higher you know, resolution without your users you know, having a need for it. Right? Uh, again, a rebuffer related one. Uh, if you look at here, there is an availability. Uh, I think the availability has stayed. Uh, uh, yeah, have I maintained my availability? Good. Now, whenever users have tried to play my stream, as it play. Uh, moving on to quality. Uh, the five pre uh, prime metric of quality are you know the audience, the availability, the start time, rebooting, and input trade. So this is a real time uh, system, as in the stream keeps refreshing every minute, giving you the latest uh, metric. So what is the rebooting in the last minute across all my users? For example, in this case, there are 88,000 odd viewers on my site at this minute. And what is the average uh, rebuffing or the start time that they are experiencing? Okay. Uh, I'll skip through because probably we are running out of time. Uh, if you see here, uh, see rebuffering is high at this point in time. Now, what I want to know is the quality has gone down, has it really affected my audience? Right? If you see, there is not much change in the audience trend, which means there was a momentary problem with quality, but then Thankfully, I have not lost my engagement opportunity. And we have a concept of notification which can proactively tell you that something is wrong with the system. In this case, for example, rebuffering is high for Switzerland. So I want to go and see what happened with Switzerland which is causing my quality to go back. So, end of the day, having looked at the product and having you know, it running for about 100 plus customers, what we have realized is that analytics you know, needs are vastly unique. So the system needs to be flexible enough. The reports I showed are all reports that your users can build themselves. So the metrics, they can be custom dimensions and metrics added and reports drawn out of those. Okay, uh, I'll uh, let Girish talk about the technology aspects of it now. I'll be talking about the analytics platform and its capabilities, which allows us to realize some of the features that Rosan mentioned in his talk. So, considering that uh, we have very little time, I'll just give a very high level overview of the platform and uh, we can open up for question after so that we can have a deeper discussion on topics that the audience is interested in. So, the analytics platform basically consists of the components the data collection layer, the data processing, and the data storage layers. So this analytics pipeline is highly programmable via the user actions at the portal interface. So the main difference that exists between this system that we have built here and the other systems that the previous speakers have spoken is that uh, the needs of our customers, the types of reports that they want, is not known a priori. We have to build a system that is highly flexible, uh, that allows the customers to extract whatever metrics that they are interested in, and then show it to them in a very intuitive manner. Therefore, we have to build an extremely flexible analytics pipeline. And uh, as Prasad was mentioning, one important piece of this pipeline is the plugin that captures the events at the client. This plugin captures the events and begins it out to our highly distributed and available data collection center servers which are all over the internet. These servers can also ingest logs from the media uh, servers that exist at a distance of one hop from the end clients. This, these logs are then fed into the data processing system that is uh, horizontally scalable. So as and when the reports of the needs of the customers increase, we can throw in more boxes and serve more customers. We then build a in-house distributed columnar database that can uh, handle highly uh, analytical workloads. I'll be talking about this in the next few slides. So as Prasad was mentioning, I will skip, o skip over this slide mainly because uh, this is nothing but how we collect the events from the client end devices and begin it out to our servers. 
once the logs are into come into the processing system, we process these logs as a data flow of MapReduce operations. We can write these uh, MapReduce operations either in C++ or in Python. And uh, we have done a bunch of latent optimizations to reduce the latency of these reports and to schedule these reports faster. So we built this on top of ClusterFS. The data storage layer presents the abstraction of data cubes to the portal, which is used for reporting the uh, numbers. Uh, a data queue is nothing but a bunch of dimensions and a bunch of metrics. Uh, by dimensions, I mean attributes like the artist name, the geography, and time. Time is a key dimension that is, that is present in all our data sets because we co collect time series data. Uh, these data cubes are realized in a distributed columnar DB. The main difference between a columnar DB and a relational DB is that the data for a columnar DB is organized along the rows, along the columns, whereas in a row-wise distribution, we have the data for one row followed by the data for the next row on the disk. In case of analytics workloads, what we realized is that our customers are interested in analyzing a bunch of columns and a few metrics that are associated with those columns, even though they might collect data for a lot of dimensions. So this was one of the characteristics of the analytics workload that we usually see, and columnar databases are the best suited for such kind of workloads. Um, but however, writing such columnar data involves updating a lot of ind indexes when we are writing it. And uh, that is a very hard problem to solve. But we solved it by, we achieve very high throughputs of write by uh, distributing this flow across multiple uh, machines. Apart from that, uh, we built bitmap indexes of the data that we write. And uh, we use compressed bitmaps to extract out the dimensions of interest during runtime. However, um, what we realized was when we were building out the QoS monitor, the latency of reports is of prime importance to our customers. Um, the previous system that we built uh, could only accommodate could only accommodate a minimum latency of 15 minutes. Uh, this was clearly not what a real-time system uh, uh, can uh, support. So therefore, we had to do certain optimizations to build the real-time uh, systems, wherein um, the data collection layer and the processing layer was uh, coalesced into a single machine on the data collectors. This uh, data is goes through a quick transformation process and then is fed into the columnar database. In the columnar database, we have to do a bunch of optimizations around uh, in-situ updates and uh, write the columns in a much faster manner. We also had to go the standard route of uh, sharding the data across nodes. And uh, the other interesting part was, once the data is sharded across nodes, we have to reconstruct the result of a query at runtime. This involves a hierarchical query execution layer, wherein one of the queries that hits the uh, data nodes is spread across multiple nodes by uh, building out a binary tree at runtime. Then the evaluation of each of these, uh, evaluation of the data on the machine happens locally, and the condensed information is bubbled up in the tree to finally show the results. Uh, we had to use other optimization techniques such as caching and a query layer to uh, achieve faster uh, throughputs. So the system has uh, scaled really well. And uh, this are some of the numbers about how the system has grown over the years. You'll see that around this time last year, we were doing about uh, 20 million records per day on the system. But uh, currently, we have doing more than 400 million records per day. This is for the uh, audience analytics module. As far as the um, QoS module is concerned, we are doing about, uh, we were doing about 
50, uh, 1.5 million records in December, whereas now it's already at 3 million records per day. So another aspect of the system is that we have been uh, tracking about more than 460 million unique viewers in, via the state's uh, files that we have in the system. We are uh, really proud to have supported very large uh, events on the internet. and. Uh, these are some of the key learnings that I wanted to highlight. Um, the data model has a very big impact on the disk utilization in the system, and uh, we, we want to uh, improve the way the data is organized so that our uh, disk utilization always goes up. Um, I'll leave the others uh, to on the board and would uh, open up for questions. We built an in-house columnar DB uh, using uh, VDD as the underlying data store. So what this columnar DB does is that it organizes the data in, in a VDD file such that each of these columns is a separate value in the VDD store. Uh, we also have uh, bitmap indexes that are built for each of the columns in the data queue. Um, a key aspect of this is that the bitmap index can be highly compressed using run length compression. And uh, we can do a number of operations on these bitmap indexes without even uncompressing the data. For example, um, we are, if you are interested in uh, figuring out all the rows that came from Bangalore, we have an index which tells that these are the rows in your DB that has the data from Bangalore. We just use a quick AND operation to figure out the rows and then do a vector-wise uh, evaluation of the result to show the data. Data as soon as it arrives on that machine. <coughs> Will be around if you, if you have a 